Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. I've been getting a lot of questions the last few days asking me to look into this claim that an asteroid will strike Earth just in time for the weekend. It's been going viral around YouTube and elsewhere, and I'm not exactly sure how it all started, but it seems to have its origins on this website, littlepebble.org, and they claim that they've been contacted by a scientist, engineer, astronomer who has inside information about a massive asteroid headed towards Earth right now. It's been repeated by other channels on YouTube, like BP Earthwatch. Let's take a listen to what he says, because he summarizes some of the information that has been attached to this story and the claims swirling around it. ...of an asteroid. Now, they're talking about asteroid uh, Bennu. It's a large one, but they've shot four mis uh, missions up in the last four months. Now, what the reason I'm doing the video and what the questions were about was there's a video circulating saying that uh, officials in Kuwait said that the U.S. has launched nuclear missiles at an asteroid and that uh, possibly has impacted, this is the latest one, so something headed towards our planet, and this one is the latest one because, if I'm not mistaken, one of the other ones broke it up into pieces, so maybe they're trying to knock down another piece. But guys, look at the situation on our entire planet. Okay, I'm going to pause it there. So basically, part of this claim seems to be that the last four launches that preceded the launch of OSIRIS-REx earlier this month were in fact secretly launching nuclear missiles to try to knock down this asteroid before it hits Earth. So the previous four launches uh, are listed here on the Little Pebble website, everything from Delta IV Heavy to other Atlas Vs. So, we're going to get into that. Um, there's also this more recent update, because as I said to some of my viewers, where are the coordinates? They claim that there's this asteroid coming towards Earth. If they know it's going to impact them, they must have pretty good information on its position and its orbit. But all I can seem to find is this, which is not, uh, these are not valid astronomical coordinates of any kind. It talks about an angle to the stars of approximately 42 degrees north, in parentheses, Earth plane latitude intersecting to object. I'm sorry, this is word salad. These are not coordinates. These are not equatorial coordinates. These are not ecliptic coordinates. This is just word salad dressed up to sound like the person knows what they're talking about when it comes to astronomy. They do give coordinates for location on Earth, where I guess they're saying they saw the asteroid from, they say it was observed at sunrise, yet later in the same statement, they claim that CCD saturation of telescope cameras will prevent the observation of low light objects from space, such as an asteroid, this late in an incoming state. What? Again, word salad, but contradictory word salad. It's not even internally consistent. They say they observed it at sunrise. Okay. If it was something that they observed by eye, then there's no getting around it. A CCD camera could see it too. Whether they observed it by eye with optical aid through a telescope or whatever, if they could see it with their eyes, you could see it with a CCD camera. There's no getting around that. CCD cameras, if anything, are better at detecting low light objects than our eyes are. They're capable of much longer exposures, integrating light over longer periods of time, they can be thermoelectrically cooled for increased sensitivity. Um, the only thing that our eyes, the main thing I should say, that our eyes have over a CCD camera is dynamic range. Our eyes are very good at uh, perceiving large differences in dynamic range in a given scene. CCD cameras typically have relatively narrow dynamic range compared to uh, our eyes. But in terms of detecting low light objects in space, I'm sorry, CCD cameras beat human vision hands down. So this is nonsensical, absolutely non nonsensical. If they observed it at sunrise, I assume somewhere in the Pacific time zone, I guess at these coordinates, then there's no getting around it. You could see it with a CCD at the same time. You could have. It's not, it, it doesn't make any sense. You, you can't say that you saw it by eye, but your CCD cameras, they can't detect it. This is an attempt 
This is but basically what this is. is an, this is an attempt by a hoaxer to make the claim unfalsifiable by saying, well, even if I gave you the coordinates, you couldn't detect it with your, your digital cameras on your telescopes anyway, so don't try to show me pictures of the coordinates that show nothing there, because it's invisible. It's invisible to CCDs. You can only see it with your eyes, and I see it with my eyes. That, that's what that is, okay? Now, as for the claims about these previous launches, we can trace every single one of the payloads that were launched by each of these rockets, even the classified satellites that they don't tell us where, they, where they're located in, in space. Uh, the, this orbital information is classified. They don't publish it. It doesn't matter. Amateur astronomers are really good at this. Uh, we track classified satellites all the time, we being amateur astronomers in general. And these satellites were no exception. Even the classified ones were very quickly located. Uh, and I'll show you that in a second. Now, as far as OSIRIS-REx, unfortunately, in this particular case, OSIRIS-REx did depart the Earth-Moon system, and it did so in a direction that brought it very close to the sun relative to our, our point of view here on Earth. And so that basically made it impossible to observe from the ground as it was departing from Earth. However, a year from now, it will be swinging back by Earth for a gravity assist as it heads out to the asteroid. And at that time, I do intend to track it with my telescope and with the uh, the, the um, satellite tracking software that I've been developing. It's good for tracking asteroids. It's also good for tracking spacecraft that happen to be flying by Earth, like, say, OSIRIS-REx. So I will be doing a webcast about that, uh, hopefully, if the weather's good, and tracking it as it goes by Earth a year from now. Of course, that doesn't really help us today when there's a claim that this weekend this thing is going to hit us and they're trying to knock it down with the... Uh, OSIRIS-REx and all these other launchers, but we can at least look at the payloads that these other vehicles put into orbit because these vehicles deposited satellites into orbit around Earth. And as it so happens, every single one of them has been tracked by amateur astronomers at this point, and we know they went into Earth orbit. They did not depart uh, the Earth-Moon system. They didn't fly away from Earth to go try to knock down an asteroid. So first up, we have this Delta IV Heavy launch on June 11th. This put up the Mentor 7 satellite, as it's being called. Uh, this was National Reconnaissance Office launch-37. Uh, and here we go. Here it is listed in Wikipedia real quick, and you can see there it is, June 11th, 2016. It's suspected to be a Mentor or Orion satellite. And... Uh, it's been tracked by amateur astronomers, so we know what its orbital elements are. It's been tracked, and that's been determined. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So this was a launch for the Navy, and this put up MUAS-5. Again, it's been tracked by amateurs. You can see it here. Uh, let's see. Then we have another NRO launch, and this one was also tracked by amateurs. This was... In raw 61. It's very hard to see here. Let me blow up this image. Hopefully it comes up. There we go. So this is the Centaur upper stage that put it into orbit. This is a fuel dump that it uh, let, let out. Okay, it keeps trying to go into the slideshow on me here. But the actual payload is up here. It's a much fainter streak that is faintly visible up here. Oh, stop it with the slideshow. There's got to be a way to turn that off. Here we go. So you can see it up here. And uh, this might be hard to see in the compressed YouTube video. I apologize if you can't see it. You know what? I'll include the link to this article in the video description so you can do go download the photo for yourself and see it. Uh, so there's that. So finally, we have a Delta IV medium that launched the GSSAP satellite. And we actually have quite a beautiful video of it being uh, boosted into its final orbit. And... Pull that up. Here we go. This is from Scott Tilley. You can see it's circularization burn here. It's going to be on the right side of the video. There it goes. So there you have it. So we know where that one was placed as well. And it was not sent to some asteroid in deep space to try to blow it up. I'm sorry, that's just not the case. So finally, let's address the actual 
asteroid that uh, Osiris Rex is being sent to. Uh, BP Earthwatch mentions it, Bennu, and I'm sure somebody's going to ask, how do we really know that Bennu isn't the threat? How do we really know that uh, NASA isn't lying about where Bennu is and that it's about to come barreling into Earth and that's why they launched a mission to it? Well, the fact of the matter is that Bennu has been observed not just by professional observatories, but also by amateur observatories. So, for example, here are the observations on the Minor Planet Center website. These have been submitted both by amateur and by professional observatories, and we can see a list of the observations. And Reedy Creek, this is an amateur astronomer who's in Australia, and uh, that's his observatory, and he made many a number of observations of this spanning a uh, few days of time here back in 1999 when it was first discovered. So he tracked it uh, back then. You can see him tracking it there again, there again a couple days later. I mean, he was on that thing back in 1999. And then if we come up to 2012, in the 2012 observations, we find the Sandlot Observatory also took a look at it. And this is another amateur astronomer. He happens to be in Topeka, Kansas. Here's an article about him, and there's his telescope and his observatory. You can see it's a roll-off shed type observatory, pretty common with some with uh, serious amateur astronomers. It's an, an easy way to have uh, a permanently housed telescope uh, in a structure. And you can see there's Gary Hug. He's the guy behind uh, the Sandlot Observatory. So this is an amateur astronomer who's very dedicated to tracking asteroids, and he tracked this asteroid. And it's, it's kind of interesting to note that right now there is a NASA spacecraft headed to this asteroid based at least in part on data that was collected by amateur astronomers. That's kind of cool to me. I think that's really cool. Uh, but we can actually do our own calculations of the orbit based entirely on the observations from just these two amateur astronomers. And so using those uh, observations just from those two observatories. I calculated the orbit myself, and here is where it's currently located. If we compute its position right now, it is over 1.5 astronomical units from Earth today. And it's actually currently getting further from Earth each day. So, no, it's not about to come barreling into Earth. And you can determine that based entirely on independent amateur astronomers having nothing to do with NASA or the government. And the next time it comes close to Earth isn't until September 2017. And that happens to be, not by coincidence, but that does happen to be when uh, OSIRIS-REx will actually swing back by Earth for a gravity assist about a year from now. And it will get a gravity assist from Earth and then head out to the, observe, uh, head out to the asteroid uh, to collect a sample and bring it back to Earth. So if we calculate the close approach for September, in 2017, we find that it matches up pretty well with the official NASA prediction. So NASA predicts that at about 2200 hours universal time on September 1st, it'll come by Earth at a distance of about 0 0.336 astronomical units. And the amateur calculation shows basically the same thing. So there you go. There's confirmation that NASA is actually telling the truth based on amateur observations of the same asteroid. Now I should point out that although Bennu is not a risk to hit Earth this weekend or any time in the immediate future, there is a slim chance that it hits Earth sometime farther into the future, starting around 2175 or so. How slim? About 0.037% cumulative impact probability. That's pretty slim. But because of the asteroid's size, about 490 meters, it could do some serious damage if it were to hit. And as a result of that, it is currently ranked second on the century risk table. So it is an object of interest, and hopefully the OSIRIS-REx mission will send us back enough data to make a more certain determination about this asteroid's future. But even if it turned out that it was going to impact Earth over 100 years from now, that gives us plenty of time to mount a mission to actually do something about it. So I hope that answers all your questions. If not, please leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Clear skies, folks.